In this section, you're learning all kinds of great rules and shortcuts for derivatives. The ones that apply to this particular problem are this. The derivative of any constant equals zero. If you have a derivative of a constant times a function, you can take that constant and pull it out and then take the derivative of that function. You're learning the power rule in this section, which says that if you have a derivative of x to some power, you can bring the power down in front of that term and then subtract one from that power. That's a really good one. And then the last one we're going to use in this particular problem says that if you have two functions added or subtracted and you want to take the derivative of the sum of those two functions, well, you can take the derivative of those two functions separately and then add those two results together. But let's see, as far as our problem is concerned, we can first split this derivative up into two pieces. Then we have constants on both of these functions, so we can pull those constants out of the derivatives. Now what we have down here is the derivative of x with respect to x. That would technically use the power rule with a power of 1 or an n value of 1. We would take that 1 and put it in front of our result and then we would subtract 1 from our power. Well ultimately what that gives us is 1 times x to the 0 power. x to the 0 power is just 1. So a short derivative made long, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. Over here with this term we're going to leave the 3 out in front. The derivative of g of x with respect to x, well we don't know but we have notation for it we call it g prime of x. So maybe I can zoom out on this just to make a little bit of space. So we found that our derivative can be simplified to 4 minus 3 times g prime of x. But I'm noticing that something is missing from this original problem. If we're going to find an answer we need to be given an x value. So we need to be told to evaluate this at a specific x and the way that we write that is typically with a vertical line over here that means evaluated at. And then I'll just pick an x value of 4. So I'm going to carry that evaluated at x equals 4 all the way down this problem into our final answer. And we can write this last line with some slightly better notation. If we're going to evaluate this expression at x equals 4, we can just replace x with a 4, and that notation looks a little bit better. Now, if we want to find g prime of 4, we have to go back up to this table, look at the g prime of x row, at the x equals 4 column, I see that g prime of 4 equals 3. So I'm going to replace g prime of 4 with 3. We end up with 4 minus 9 which is negative 5 as our final answer. Now a quick note, I put a lot of lines of work in here, and that is not typically the way that we're going to do problems. Once you've learned the rules and practiced the rules and become comfortable with the rules, we're going to skip all the way from this first step of this problem all the way down to this last step down here. If you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and do it. But I wanted to show you how to get from the very first step of the problem to this step down here uh, using all of these rules that are mentioned in this section. Okay, more practice with derivative rules in the next one. I'll see you there.